It's no use looking for them. The Maldives are not there. They appear on very few maps of the world. Paradoxically, to find one of the most beautiful places on Earth requires meticulous scanning of the Indian Ocean. These green and blue tiers that stream along the southwest coast of India are indeed hard to detect. The government, moreover, set their number to an arbitrary 2,000, since it is impossible to provide an exact number for these sandbanks that appear and disappear through the ages. These islands form 26 atolls, the atolls, the only Maldivian word known throughout the world. The first inhabitants baptized them in Sanskrit, the Maldives, the garland of islands. Today, 199 of them are inhabited, 74 are devoted exclusively to tourism. In the past, Hulule, the airport island, was the summer residence of the sultans. All visitors who arrive by plane have to pass through here. The airport has only one transfer area and one reception area. Right away you learn the rules of the Devehi language. There are no words for hello and welcome. There is simply a smile. At the end of the airport, the visitors move on towards the islands, mainly on board small boats that act as taxi, bus, or high-speed train. The atolls, which have been inhabited for 5,000 years, have seen the arrival of the Phoenicians, followed by Egyptians, Chinese, Romans, and Sri Lankans. The first written reference to the atolls comes from the Greek mathematicians Ptolemaeus, who names them in the second century AD. Which means that this small port is in the habit of receiving visitors. Across from the airport lies the island of Malé, surely the smallest capital in the world, two kilometers long and 1.5 kilometers wide. Malé, which was the island of the sultans until the 12th century, now is home to a third of the 236,400 Maldivians. They call them the Devehin, the islanders. They are a mix of Africans, Malaysians, Indians, and Arabs. They are, above all, exceptional sailors. The maneuvers of the Donis, in which hands and feet perform a strange ballet, are a spectacle one never tires of. Merchandise is transferred through the port, which was built between 1620 and 1648. Although the Maldives do not produce any raw material, all goods pass through this central point before being redistributed over the atolls. The scattering of the islands over 90,000 square kilometers poses problems for its inhabitants. How do you make these men and women realize that they belong to a group when the geography drives them towards individuality? They are confronted with the centralist notion at different moments in their lives, starting with secondary school or college. Yeah. 
because while their education may start in their island, it is completed here in Malay, where they all come together. In particular, they learn English, which will allow them to continue their higher education in India, the United States, or England. In the meantime, they all get together in an immense boarding school in the capital. Once a year, there is another event that brings them together in the center of Malay. The inter Etal Soccer Championships. They come from all the islands. Some travel more than six days by Doni, and they follow the achievements of their favorite players with a reserved passion. The Sunni Muslim religion, which is part of the constitution, is one of the foundations of Maldive society. In this mausoleum lie the remains of Abdul Barakat Yasuful Barubari, Coming from Africa in 1153, he introduced the Muslim religion to the country. One of the first converts was Sultan Mohammed bin Abdullah. He had this mosque built. It was rebuilt in 1656 and is now the oldest mosque in the Maldives. Next to the tomb of the Sultan, the cemetery for Maldivian personalities, and the indispensable shadow clock. The time for the five daily prayers is calculated by using the sun, like a sundial. Their moment is indicated by curves engraved in the base. Facing the mosque is the Sultan's park, a garden where you find the museum dedicated to the modern history of the Maldivian atolls. A number of paintings show the clothing of the Maldivians in the 19th century. Even as they were a British protectorate from 1887 to 1965, the Maldives have always been independent, except for a brief period, for 15 years and six months in the 16th century, when they were under Portuguese rule. During a 127-year period, seven sultans succeeded one another as rulers of this society, while foreign dignitaries from all over the world paid their visits. In the 14th century, there were also several queens who were heads of state. In the only moment of turmoil in its history, a Tamil attack on November 3rd, 1988, claimed a single victim, this Suzuki motorbike, preserved with pious fervor. In the heart of the capital, the golden dome of the Islamic institution, one of the most important in southern Asia. On the front wall is the name of the national hero, Sultan Mohammed Tukurufanu. He chased out the Portuguese and so prevented the spread of Christianity. Fishery, which dominated the economy of the island for a long time, still remains an important sector with 40% of all economic activity. Most important, tuna, known throughout the Indian Ocean as the fish of the Maldives. 20,000 tons of the fish are processed every year in the Felivari cannery and shipped to local markets as well as Europe and Japan. There are two essential reasons for this heaven-sent abundance of fish. The monsoon with winds that create favorable currents, and the fact that there is not a single factory, not a single industry, that pollutes the waters in this part of the Indian Ocean.
In addition to tuna, dozens of other species allow for variations in menus and colors. In the rear of the market, the stalls of the carvers who prepare the fish fillets that the Maldivians are particularly fond of. Beside the donies of the fishermen, there are the schooners. In this country of islands, they are the equivalent of the trucks and trains on the continent. These schooners transport everything, building materials, food, animals, and passengers. On board the schooners, they can go from one island to the other at more affordable prices than those provided by air travel or the motorboats of the hotel islands. At the top of this maritime network that provides the Maldivians with their daily food, the freighters. Coming from nearby countries like Sri Lanka, India or Singapore, they wait in the ports while the donies of the wholesalers relieve them of their cargo. Destination, Ari Beach, south of the Alifu Atoll, 104 kilometers, 35 minutes by helicopter from the capital in an explosion of colors. In this atoll, which consists of 81 islands, the 7,800 Maldivians occupy only 61 islands, while the other 20 are dedicated to tourism. Ari Beach is a family island, managed by a Maldivian, where far away from everyday events, the days pass slowly, interrupted only by the departures of the donies, a swim in the sea, and nautical sports. But the main pastime here is deep sea diving. 
Like everything about the Maldives, the underwater world is exceptional because of the sparkling water, the diversity of its depths, and especially the abundance of its fauna. This region is one of the world's largest deep sea diving centers, with some 200 kinds of coral and thousands of fish. And when the evening comes, the villagers often find themselves around a fire for a boduberu, the traditional Maldivian dance. A dozen musicians beat their drums, made of the trunks of coconut palms, braced with the skins of manta rays. One musician begins the chant, and the dancers join in while they clap their hands. Often at the end of the night, they reach a state of trance. Two strokes from the hotel islands, but often hours away by Doni across the coral banks, lie the islands reserved to the Maldivians. The separation is intentional, a way to preserve a population but also to protect traditions. Occasionally, visitors can, despite all this, visit these islands and even stay for a while. If you wish to visit an island, you have to buy a permit from the atoll government. The permit only costs a dollar. They will also ask you for a deposit of a few dozen dollars per day in case you have to return to a hotel island. The land belongs to the state, and the village is inscribed in a kind of rectangle, in the center of which you find the artesian well and its freshwater treasure.
Each family settles in a guati, which measures 15 by 30 meters surrounded by a low coral wall. The kitchen is separated from the living quarters. A garden with a few fruit trees that provide mangoes, bananas, papayas, and or coconuts, from which the women extract their oils. I grate the coconut and then let it macerate in the sand for 10 days. That'll give me the oil that is used in the kitchen and for the hair. The woman owns a third of the house and the coconut palms. Islamic law has relieved her of some of the outside responsibilities, but has given her a larger role in the house. And like on all the islands, the days are punctuated by the call of the muezzin and by the ablutions that precede the prayers. Heading to the north of the atoll towards Rasdu for a trip unique to the area. It starts in the early morning on board a dhoni. In one hour, it takes the passengers from Ari Beach to Ma Fushivaru, a small port island barely big enough to welcome the 17 passengers. For half an hour, the giant dragonfly then flies over the myriad of lagoons till it arrives on Malay and the Hulule Airport. From the helicopter, the traveler and his bag then head for the hydroplane port. Razdu, the final destination, at 45 minutes from there, on board these machines that work wonders in this region. It's uh, perfect for this kind of geography. The Maldives consist of about 2,000 small islands, and with a seaplane you can access all islands with any, without any problems. You don't need runways or anything, just land on the water. It's very simple. Between the atolls of Malay and Alifu, Kurumati, 
One of the largest islands in the Maldives, the ideal kind of island. It has three villages, the cottage, Blue Lagoon, and the village. 930 inhabitants, 450 Maldivians, and 480 visitors. One of the few buses in the Maldives. It links the three villages together, and in that way makes it possible to enjoy their full diversity. In the center, a forest of flowers, 600 species, 260 of which are unique to the region. Most of them have been carried here from the Pacific by the winds and the sea currents. All around, seaside houses where you can contemplate the maritime landscape. Every evening at exactly 4 p.m., the people from the neighboring island of Razdu open their doors to the tourists. <laughs> While the fishermen tend to their donies, While the children continue playing on the beach, the other people in the village become traders. For two hours, they devote themselves to their visitors, selling the products of their craft. And at precisely 6 p.m., they take you back to your doni. The traders become fishermen again, and the family mothers start preparing supper. The underwater life is so close to the surface that there is no need to dive to admire it. With a simple mask, you can easily move between schools of multicolored fish. The evening attraction, the Supper of the Rays. They are fed by a fisherman and sometimes even show a certain familiarity. Biadu and its sister island, Vili Varu. You get there by hydroplane or by boat. The helicopter only flies over. Okay. 
The island is without a doubt the smallest of the Maldives. It measures 800 meters round, and if you want to go further, you will have to climb up a coconut palm. An additional means of transport in the Maldives, the speedboat. Every hotel island has one. It allows you to speed up time. In one hour, it covers a distance that would take between six and seven hours with the traditional doni. One of the most prestigious stopovers in the Maldives, Riiveli. Every island exists as a kind of independent republic. They each have their own rules and regulations, and sometimes even have their own time zones, different from the capital or the neighboring islands. It's a clever little trick we devise so we can take advantage of 1.5 hours more sunshine. The sunset is at 8 p.m. instead of 6.30 p.m. based on daylight hours. Even though the island is so tiny, you can still go for long walks by simply going to the next island on foot. Between 30 minutes and 45 minutes of good exercise, with the water up to your waist or even up to your neck if you're small. You have to do it by exhaling and using the flippers. The best spots for diving are less than an hour away. Beginners can reach them without any trouble after just a few instruction sessions.
For experienced divers, there are cruises that take them from island to island in specially equipped boats. They allow you to explore the most prestigious diving spots in the space of one week. Back to Rihiveli near the bungalow, the village of the 120 Maldivians who work here. They live here six to eight months a year without leaving the island. Leisure activities take up a large part of the day. Laguna Beach opposite the capital. It is rated among the 300 best hotels in the world. It is here that the famous equation of local tourism is most applicable, a Maldivian behind every guest. Along the beaches, there are amazing things to see. At first, the visitors, surprised and intrigued, wonder what the reason is for all the commotion. The curious hurry closer, and see two rays who used the softness of the spot for a few moments of flirtation before smoothly moving back to the depths of the ocean. On the other side of the lagoon is the island of Guli, one of the few where a shipyard has been established, a necessary operation in a country where even the poorest need to own a boat. Here the shipwrights build, repair and outfit the traditional donies. These men, the Ma'avadin, are the most respected men in the Maldives, along with the goldsmiths and the heavers. Two months a year, the great designers, because of their experience, come to this shipyard to act as guides and advisors to the carpenters, experience and tradition. We carry the plans in our hearts They've been handed down by word of mouth, by our fathers and grandfathers. We do not know exactly why we build them like this, but we do know that they are perfectly adapted for the region. It takes five carpenters 40 days to build a 12 meter long doni, using mainly coconut wood. The finishing touch is the point, which allows the ship to be seen from far away. Each atoll has its own boats with their own specific features. These features are secret and only the initiated can distinguish them and tell which doni belongs to which island. The super doni, the odi, is very rare. Its three masts, which stand out against the horizon, allow it to transport dried fish to Sri Lanka, from where it will return laden with rice, sugar, flour, cotton, and clothes. In this temple of shipbuilding, a few meters away from the shipyard, life passes by slowly to the rhythm of the tides. The atolls are fragile. Worn away by the onslaught of the ocean, 
They also suffer from the sand clearings operated by sand merchants and by the masons who use the coral for the construction of houses and walls. Almost all the inhabited houses in the villages are made with this raw material, which is God-given, cheap, and available at just a few meters from the construction site. In a land where the islands appear and disappear within a few centuries, where a minor wave of just one meter high floods everything on its path, it is dangerous to disturb a balance whose origins are virtually unknown. There are two conflicting theories, one from Darwin, which states that the atolls are former volcanoes who, while slowly sinking into the sea, created lagoons with their craters in the center. Next came the coral lining. This theory would seem better suited for Pacific islands. The other theory states that the atolls were erected by the corals, who, while multiplying towards the surface looking for oxygen, left a kind of dead core just above the water. Erosion then reduced this core to sand dust. No matter what the truth is, the atoll is a fragile environment, threatened by all kinds of phenomena, even paradoxically by the low protective walls. In order to reduce the erosive action of the ocean, the Maldivians have built this wave breaker in front of practically all inhabited islands. However, these walls are made of coral taken from these same islands, which accelerates the natural erosion cycle. Other coral diggings are operated in order to make more land. Here, the survival of man and the survival of the islands are in competition with each other. The danger of disappearing is real. The last disappearance dates back to a few years on an island close to Malay. Before the rising of the waters, the population had to seek refuge in a district of the capital. Today, they still live there. The island has slowly sunk into the ocean. There are still very beautiful days on the horizon for the atolls, where the possibilities for accommodation are manifold, from very luxurious to very simple, with one common rule, the discovery of an exceptional natural environment, like here in Makunudu, but also in Full Moon or Vabinfaru, Because of the success achieved by the Maldives, attracting more and more tourists every year, another risk looms on the horizon, seeing the local population pushed back to an ever-decreasing number of island villages, while the hotel islands proliferate. The Minister of Tourism, sensing the danger, has taken a wise decision. 
we do not intend to develop even 20% of the available resources for us for tourism development. This is the sacrifice we are paying. This is the price we want to pay for the sake of the environment. Going back to the north, towards the island of Kashidu, the boat follows this highway of the sea that the Maldivians sail in large numbers to return to their families on the occasion of traditional feasts. This route is also a trip back in time, because Kashidu is home to one of the sites where Maldive history was supposedly written. A largely ignored history, made up mostly of legends and tales delivered by word of mouth. Tradition states that in the beginning, a prince came from the Serendib Islands, or Ceylon, and was proclaimed king by the population that was flattered by his arrival. So when excavations on Kashidu brought to the surface the foundations of a Dagoba, an important monument in the Buddhist religion, the excavators thought they had found concrete evidence of the ancient origins of this people before the arrival of the Muslim religion in the 12th century. Not a single trace of Buddha has been found to date. The excavations are difficult because the temple collapsed after the local people took away rocks. The first estimates indicate that we're dealing with an enormous temple, with its perimeter close to the houses. Little by little, this site reveals its secrets to the surprise of the local people who in the past never saw this place as anything else than a mound from which they could take rocks to build their houses. The recovered pieces will be brought together in the museum with statues uncovered in the far south on the Etal of Alif, little statues of Buddha and sand rocks or coral coming from other Buddhist temples. There is little doubt that the omnipresent coral will this time allow the reconstruction of the history of the Maldives. In the meantime, life flows serenely in the small island village of Kishido. Leaving the shores of this island of memories, where the history of the Maldives is rewritten, this thought, cited by an old Maldivian we met one night, comes to mind. Legend has it that God created the world in seven days, and after that, took all the time he needed to create the Maldives.